through before. Uh, I'm just trying to get acclimated as fast as possible. Um, it's kind of nice that I've been injured where I've been, been able to watch some games, see their style of play, see the little uh, nuances and differences from uh, what our system was in Columbus. Um, and just try and get my mindset and uh, my thinking on the same page as what they're what they're thinking about and, and, and their system. So um, definitely a challenge, but you know, when it's playoff time, it doesn't matter. It's just, uh, let's just hit the ground running. Next up, we'll go to Chris Johnston, Sportsnet. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Riley. What would you say has been the, the most unusual or weird thing you've had to contend with uh, getting traded while injured and, and rehabbing here? Um, I think, I, I think, I don't think I met many of the guys for about three weeks. So I was traded, I moved up, I quarantined, and then they were on the road for, uh, I think, a week, week and a half. And then, um, when they get back the first day that I was supposed to be in here, um, we had a little bit of a, an incident. So a couple of us had to, uh, quarantine for a couple of days, but, um, so it was kind of strange where, you know, it was almost three and a half weeks after the trade deadline and I was finally getting to meet all the guys and, and, uh, just kind of get, uh, get to know the group a little bit. Next up, we'll go to Jonas Siegel, the athletic. Go ahead, Jonas. Hey, Riley, just following up on that, what was the off-ice experience like changing teams in the middle of all this? Uh, it's been great. I mean, since uh, since the trade happened, um, the Leafs have been first class. They've taken care of anything and everything we've needed um, and really gone above and beyond of of uh, what I expect when, when moving teams. So um, it's been great. The training staff's been really good uh, from from the guys helping me do my rehab to the guys in the in the training room, uh, working with me every day. Um, it's just been, been really great. And then obviously getting back on the ice and being able to work with their skills, uh, coaches and, and then getting back into the practices. It's been, um, it's honestly been, uh, it's kind of blown my mind how, how, uh, seamless everything runs here. Next up, we'll go to Steve Simmons, Toronto Sun. Go ahead, Steve. Riley, you've been on the other side, Columbus, Boston, playing against the Leafs in, playoffs or whatever you want to call the first round of, of last August. Um, what did you see about this team that made them unable to win the rounds you played against them? Um, you know, last year was really, I think, a very unique circumstance just because uh, it's such a short series. Um, and sometimes when that happens, you know, you, you – the bounces can go one way or the other, or you can't quite establish what you want to in a, in a full seven game series. Um, I did definitely notice from this series with Boston to last year is that uh, they were, they were a lot harder um, compete wise. Uh, I thought their top guys were pretty, pretty darn good last year. And, you know, we found, we kind of found a way to, to get it done. Um, but I thought their top guys were really good. Um, so it seemed like they were, they were kind of primed and had some momentum going at the end of the year. You know, we were kind of in no man's land, but um, that also obviously got interrupted by the, the, the stoppage. So um, I think last year was just a really unique case. And um, this year seems like, you know, the team's firing on, on almost all cylinders and, and has that momentum going into the playoffs and knows where their game's at instead of trying to find it in a, in a quick five game series. We'll take a couple more here. We'll go to Kristen Chilton, TSN. Go ahead, Kristen. Riley, when you were uh, watching the Leafs, I guess what stood out to you the most in terms of those differences um, that you mentioned, maybe in terms of structure from Columbus and, and what's it been like skating with uh, Mikheyev and Kerfoot so far? Yeah, I, I noticed they make a lot of possession plays. Um, coming out of the, their own zone, the D, they do a really good job of, of beating the forecheck skating through pressure, um, finding the, the guy available, whether it be low center winger, um, and then coming through the neutral zone. If, you know, a lot of teams, I know our team in, in Columbus, we did a lot of dump and chase or chip and chase and tip it in and go get it. And it seems like they make a lot more uh, possession plays here, whether it be changing sides through the neutral zone or, or trying to find, find lanes, chipping it to speed. Um, just seems like they always have two or three guys close in support, ready for the puck at all times. So definitely, um, definitely going to be a little bit weird and, and um, not as natural to begin with. But uh, you know, once we get going, my line mates have been great. And Mickey's been uh, Mickey's been playing really well. Curves, obviously, um, he's like a Swiss Army knife out there. He kind of does everything 
And so just relying on those guys and, and uh, asking them and getting their feedback and, and just kind of adapting on the fly. We'll take three more here. We'll go to Richard Labe with La Press. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah, hi. Um, so you, you're just coming in, obviously. Um, this is a brand new thing for you. Can you have a sense of the rivalry, what that means, and, and what those two teams have meant uh, for, for hockey fans in Canada over the years? Yeah, um, you kind of read about the history and, and hear about it. Um, obviously, two original six teams that have had a lot of success, maybe not in the last uh, 20, 25 years. Um, so obviously both teams are looking to get back to that uh, storied franchise and that success and, and that level. Um, you know, there's a lot of passion with both fan bases. I know um, I've gotten a lot of messages from people all across. I'm from Western Canada, all across Canada about us. And, and I've ran into a lot of Habs fans in years past too. So um, yeah, it should be fun. Uh, it, I know, I think it was the last time uh, these teams met in the playoffs. I think the winner of the series won won the Stanley Cup. So um, that's pretty pretty cool uh, cool little note of history. And you know, I'm sure we're looking to repeat that. We'll take two more here. We'll go to Lance Hornby, Toronto Sun. Go ahead, Lance. Uh, Riley, I saw you take a couple of drills uh, today with uh, with Nick. Uh, you guys uh, kind of talked about the irony of where you are this year compared to last year, and how has he uh, helped you a little bit? Do you think uh, in your integration here? Yeah, it's been really nice having a, a good friend and a familiar face here. Um, you know, I was traded, I think, day and a half or day before he was. And I was messaging him after because I had heard some, you know, on Twitter and the rumors about, uh, you know, the Leafs were, were obviously interested. And I was like, this would be just the greatest thing if we could end up together again. And fortunately, we were. So, um, you know, it's unique to look at the last year and kind of where we are and where what our goals were at the start of the season with uh, Columbus. And, you know, this is kind of the way things play out. This is the business of it. And, uh, I, you know, we're not getting any younger. So having an opportunity like this, uh, you don't want to let it slide. So it's fun to have a, a good friend like that along for the ride and, and uh, just to just to help with the daily stuff and uh, having a good friend around. And last one here, we'll go back to Chris Johnston. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Riley, I'm just wondering, could, can you share with us some of the mechanics of the trade since you were injured? Did you get a say in if you were traded or where you were traded or anything like that? Or how did that play out? I didn't have that much uh, power in my contract, no. Uh, I was actually out for lunch with uh, my wife and and uh, newborn. So we were, I really didn't expect it at that point. I, I hadn't quite thought it through where, you know, a team like uh, like this or another team close to the cap might it might actually help them in, in hindsight. So um, I was quite surprised, but um, anytime you get a call from your GM, you, know, you usually know it's, it's either that or you're getting sent down. I didn't, and I was hurt, so I wasn't getting sent down. So um, obviously we were a little bit stunned at first, but very excited. And um, once you kind of let it set in and you realize that you're going to a franchise like Toronto and, and a fan base like this, then, and a team and the success they've had and, and the buildup they've had in the recent years, uh, you kind of you kind of turn into a little kid again and about the excitement uh, of what lies ahead. Thanks, Riley. Thank you.